Welcome to Ram Kitchen. I'm your host, Susan Miscavige. A few years ago, quinoa became a trendy ingredient in lots of dishes. Its nutritional value inspired the United Nations to declare 2013 the International Year of Quinoa in hopes of combating world hunger. But what exactly is quinoa? It's the seed from the Chinoptium plant. The Incas used it many years ago and nicknamed it the mother grain because they believed that it possessed sacred properties. Today, quinoa is popular because it's rich in nutri nutrients and it's gluten free. It's a great source of protein and fiber when compared to other grains. In addition, it can be grown in a variety of conditions, which makes it even more appealing across the world. There are thousands of varieties of quinoa, with the most popular being red, black, and white. Today's episode is going to explore the white variety in three different dishes for each meal of the day. We'll start off with apple cinnamon quinoa for breakfast, then we'll make sun-dried tomato and mozzarella sliders for lunch, and finally we'll create a buffalo chicken quinoa mac and cheese that will leave you wanting seconds. Let's make quinoa popular again with these three delicious recipes. The ingredients for apple cinnamon quinoa are as follows. Three quarters of a cup of quinoa, one and a half cups of water, two apples of choice diced, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and a drizzle of honey. All right, so the quinoa has been cooking with the apples in the one and a half cups of water for about 20 to 25 minutes. And what I wanted to do is, I figured you didn't need to watch me cutting up apples and mixing them together. But what I wanted to show you was the consistency that you should see once the quinoa is ready. So when you take the lid off after it's been simmer simmering for 20 to 25 minutes, it should basically look like this consistency where it's taken up most of the water, if not all of the water, and the apples are nice and tender. Just like that. So the last thing that we need to do for this recipe then is to add the two teaspoons of cinnamon. So I'm going to do that next. And if you're not really into cinnamon, you can even cut that in half. It's up to you how much you want. Uh, the other thing that you notice, there's no sugar added in this recipe because the apples should have enough sugar to make uh, the quinoa sweet. So don't worry about trying to put sugar in. But I would suggest maybe if you are picking out apples, don't pick something like a Granny Smith because that's kind of sour and it might and pre pretty tart, so that might not work out so well for you. Okay, so we just give this a really good stir. That looks pretty good and incorporated. All right, and then um, we're gonna just take mason jars. You can actually let it cool a little bit like this first before you do anything. And then basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some mason jars and put them uh, put the actual mixture into two mason jars of this size. So, um, you know, depending upon which sizes you have. If you have small children, you could even make half ones, uh, half portions. It's up to you what you decide. But these are the portions that I would use. So what we'll do is I'll put this in the jars, and when we come back, we're going to move on to our slider recipe. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back. You're watching Ram Kitchen on RCTV. Our next recipe is sun-dried tomato mozzarella sliders, so let's take a look at the ingredients. For sun-dried tomato and mozzarella quinoa sliders, you'll need one cup of quinoa, two cups of beef broth, dash of Worcestershire sauce, three quarters of a cup shredded mozzarella cheese, two sun-dried tomatoes chopped, one egg, three tablespoons of flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And you'll also need olive oil for cooking, about two tablespoons. Okay, before we mix our ingredients, I just wanted to talk to you about what you need to do to prep your quinoa. So this is just a mesh sieve. It's important that you rinse your quinoa before you use it. It gets rid of the bitterness and the soapy taste from the natural casing on top of the quinoa. So what I did here is I cooked the beef broth and the quinoa together. So this is what the final product will look like. And then, and again, there's just a little dash of Worcestershire sauce in there. So we're gonna take everything and we're gonna put it together in a bowl. You wanna let this cool slightly, but not completely. Uh, it can be just a little bit warm. You have to be careful with the temperature because when you add the egg, you might actually cook the egg. So you have to be careful with that. 
Okay, then we're gonna take the sun-dried tomatoes and dump them in. The mozzarella cheese. Okay, I took all the spices and I mixed them together. So this is the salt, the pepper, the garlic um, powder, and the flour all together, all the dry ingredients. And then I'm gonna give that a stir first before I add the egg in. Just like that. It's good to coat everything together. And then the egg will be the binder. Okay, and then we'll take the egg and mix that in. And I also, if you, I don't know if you noticed that, but I just beat the egg just a little bit so that uh, you get it incorporated in nicely. Okay. That looks pretty good. And then what you need to do is get a quarter cup measuring cup. Um, because I've done this before, I'm just going to use my hands, but I'm going to get about a quarter cup measuring cup and scoop out the stuff. So I'm going to actually take off my rings to do this. To form the patties. And you're going to take a little bit more than that. And then you're just going to form your patties. And you want to have either a parchment lined baking sheet ready or even um, wax paper would work as well. And then you're going to form your patties. It makes about six patties total. All right, so all of our patties are made. It's actually best to let them chill for about 10 minutes to keep them solidified when you put them in the pan. Otherwise, sometimes they can break apart. So I'm actually going to go put them in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes, and then I'll meet you back at the stove and we'll cook them. All right, so I'm just checking to make sure that the oil is hot enough. So basically what I do is I just take a little bit of the burgers and I put them in here. And if you notice that they start bubbling, then you know that the oil is hot enough. If you don't get it hot enough, they just become a sponge for the oil. So we're going to put them in. That's the sound you want to hear when you jump them and dump them in. And you also don't want to crowd the pan. So I'm only going to do four of the six that I made. And then I'll take these out and I'll cook the other two by themselves. So you can just arrange them a little bit like that. And then I'm just going to set my timer for three minutes. And you don't want to touch them. You want to let them go. So don't feel like you need to move them around because otherwise they don't form that crisp crust. And you actually uh, might break them apart because they are somewhat fragile at this stage. So we're going to do three minutes on one side, and then we'll flip them over, and then we're going to move them to a paper towel lined tray. This. Both sides are nice and crispy now, so we're going to take these and move them to the lined tray. And we're going to let them, the tray absorb some of the grease from the pan. Okay, so I'm going to finish up cooking these, and then when we come back, we're going to move on to our quinoa mac and cheese. told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Welcome back. You're watching Ram Kitchen on RCTV. Our final dish today is buffalo chicken quinoa mac and cheese. So let's take a look at the ingredients. For buffalo chicken quinoa mac and cheese, you'll need one rotisserie chicken breast removed and chopped into bite-sized pieces, one and a quarter cups of quinoa rinsed and drained, one and a half cups of milk, two tablespoons of flour, a quarter of a cup plus two tablespoons of Frank's buffalo wing sauce, one and a half cups of shredded cheddar cheese, a quarter of a cup of blue cheese crumbled, and chopped celery and additional blue cheese for serving. This is what your final product will look like. It should have a nice brown covering on it from broiling it in the oven, but uh, we need to put it together first. So the very first thing you need to do, and again, I've done this ahead of time, is rinse and drain your quinoa and cook it according to your package directions. So I have that all taken care of here. And then you're gonna remove the breast of the rotisserie chicken, and we're gonna cut that into bite-sized pieces. So let's do that now. And then you're just going to add this to the quinoa. So we'll just cut up a little bit and add it to the quinoa. And we'll give it a good stir. All right, so that looks good. And then we'll just give it a quick stir. And then we're going to need to actually move over to the stove and cook the sauce. So that's ready to go. 
So let's move over to the stove and we'll make the sauce for it. All right, so now we're at the stove and the very first thing you need to do is take a half a cup of your milk and your flour and start to make a little bit of the start of the roux in the bottom of your pan. So I've done that now. And just make sure that you either whisk it together. I whisked it first with this little mini whisk so you get all the particles together. And then you're gonna add the rest of the milk once you have it started. So we'll do that and we'll give it a stir. And you want this over about medium to medium high heat. I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit. And we wanna keep stirring it constantly because if you don't, then you're gonna have lumps and it could even burn and scald on the bottom. The last thing you wanna do is scald this. So we're just gonna keep stirring it until it comes to a boil and then we're gonna boil it for a minute. Okay, so it's come to a boil, so I'm gonna set my timer for a minute. And again, you wanna constantly stir this while it's boiling. And then after that minute is over, we're gonna take it off the heat and add all the other ingredients for the sauce. All right, so this is boiled for a minute. We'll take it off the heat, and the first thing we're gonna do is add the wing sauce. I'll get my spatula in there and get it all out. Okay, and then we're gonna stir that. And make a nice orange color once it's all mixed together. There we go. Okay, and do this gently because it's very hot and you don't want to spill any outside the pan. Okay, that looks great. And then to that, we're gonna add the cheddar cheese. And then we're just gonna stir it until the cheddar cheese is melted. And then we're gonna take all of this back over to the table and we're gonna assemble everything together. You wanna to look for a, a silky smooth consistency. All right, so our sauce is nice and smooth. So I'm gonna pour it over top of the quinoa and the chicken in the bowl. I'm gonna make sure you get it all out. Okay. Like that. Oh, there's just a little bit more in there. Let's get it all out. Okay. And then we're gonna just give this a good stir. It's easier to fold it in to start off with so that everything gets nice and coated and then you can start to stir it. It's a shame you can't smell this because it smells delicious right now. So I've prepared a 9 by 13 pan and all I've done is sprayed some cooking spray in it so that this doesn't stick. And we're going to turn this out once I have a good stir here. Let me just get this over here. We're going to turn this into the pan. And because everything is cooked, all we're going to do is broil it to put that nice brown toasty covering on top. So we're good. I'm going to dump this in, and you're going to notice that I didn't stir it completely well, but that's easy to fix when you're in the pan here. Okay, get all the last little bits. Okay. And then we're just going to spread it out. And you want it to be even. So I'm going to give in there's a couple pieces that didn't get stirred in, so I'll do that real quick as well. And you want to try to make it as flat as possible. So just spread it out with your spatula. Looks pretty good. Okay. And then the final step before we take it to the oven, you're going to take your quarter cup of blue cheese and we're going to sprinkle that on top. Our blue cheese crumbles and then we're gonna put this on top if you have people who don't like blue cheese you can completely skip this stage and then you can put it on as a condiment afterwards so you don't have to do this if you don't have people who like blue cheese okay that looks good so now we're going to take it over to the oven and we're going to broil it for about five to seven minutes keep an eye on it because it burns very quickly so you can go from a nice crispy brown to burned very quickly Oops, let's take it over to the oven. Hey, let's check out this park. Oh, wow, that 
that's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back. Before we review our recipes today, I wanted to offer you a little bit of a hint on where you can purchase quinoa. If you find you enjoy it, it's much more cost effective to purchase it at a warehouse store. The price per pound is much better than the typical grocery store. So let's recap what we made today. We started off with our breakfast with our apple cinnamon quinoa. This is how you're going to package it. Um, this is a double batch, so I have two blue jars and two um, clear jars. And all you're going to do is drizzle a little bit of honey on top. And again, if you don't want any honey, you don't have to do that. If your apples are sweet enough, you're good to go. So we're just going to put a little bit on here and a little bit on there. And then we'll just lit them up like that. And then you're ready to go. So if you've ever done overnight oats before, this is a really good idea. You can serve this either hot or cold. So you can just put this in the microwave in the morning and you can eat it either hot or cold. Then we moved on to our slider. So there's two different ways you can do this. If you don't want to have a roll and you want to keep it gluten-free, we can just put a bed of slaw mix on a plate like that. And then we can just put a burger on top. Okay, or you can even just eat it by itself or we can do it on a bun. So I'm going to put a little bit of mayonnaise on this bun. And then we'll just grab another one. And I'm going to put a little bit of slow mix on there. It adds a nice little crunch factor. And put it together like so. Just like that. Okay, and then finally we have our quinoa buffalo chicken mac and cheese. So I'm just going to scoop that portion here. Just like that. And when you're plating, if you want to add a crunch factor to this, I have a little bit of celery that you can put on top. And if you really like blue cheese like me, you can add some extra blue cheese. Put a little bit more celery. And there you have it. So I hope we've inspired you to use something new in your diet and try some quinoa sometime. And if you like it, if you go online, there are tons of recipes. So these are just a smattering of all the things that you can do with quinoa. See you next time on Ram Kitchen.